Hi, this is your host, Sapil Bharatiya, and welcome to our special series of Let's Talk interviews for SLO Conf. And today we have with us Stefan Lips, a staff software engineer at Procore. Stefan, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. If you look at, you know, reliability is a, a kind of key attribute or feature that users of modern system, you know, they, they expect it. Yet reliability is not a traditional metric such as response time, for example, which can be measured using observability tools. So if I ask you, if you look at, you know, the modern whole cloud native cloud stack, what kind of options are there for SREs to measure system reliability? Yeah, well, that is a really great question um, because it touches on a key aspects on how SREs can be most effective. So the key question here is really, what is reliability? And the answer to that can be different depending on whom we ask. But in the end, the key answer is always one, and that's the one from the user, the customer. And that is where over the last about 10 years, we've seen a shift from using traditional observability metrics, like you mentioned, response time, to using higher level concepts like service level indicators, SLIs, and service level objectives or targets. The SLIs and the associated SLOs and error budgets provide a tool for the SREs to look at the system reliability from the perspective of the user, while also gaining visibility into future degradation when considering the current trends, reliability trends. And the key, of, the key to this approach really is to develop meaningful SLIs. In other words, not just relabel the mentioned response time as an SLI, but develop SLIs that cover the user experience from the user's perspective, where the term user experience really is a collection for the different user journeys that a system supports. And fortunately, by now, we have a lot of really awesome material available that covers the concept and the implementation of SLOs and SLIs. So anybody who's just getting started on the SLO journey, they have a comprehensive body of knowledge and experience that they can draw from. If you look at things from the purpose, if you look at things from the perspective of an engineer, are there any potential pitfalls when it comes to measuring or quantifying system reliability? Uh, is there any archaic heal that engineers should be aware of? <laughs> oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, before um, we mentioned the concept of the user journeys. But as the, en the engineers, we rarely experience those user journeys, at least not like our real world users do. We are so close to the systems that we build and support day after day, day in, day out, that we often tend to view a system and the associated performance and reliability in lower level technical terms and details. For example, is our system available? Does it respond within n seconds? Do we get errors? Now, those are all, of course, valid metrics, and they impact the overall user journey or experience, but they don't paint the whole picture. For example, um, consider a system that has automatic retries. Just because an error happens does not mean that the user journey or the experience is compromised. You could also, if you want to call it the not seeing the forest for the tree syndrome. So to effectively use SLIs and SLOs to measure reliability, it is really important to take the bird's eye view of the system like a real user. Because in the end, it doesn't matter if the engineer thinks the system is reliable, if the user thinks it is not. Well, uh, let's continue the discussion. And let's say we have a system that has well-defined service label indicators and targets SLOs. Does that allow us to kind of comprehensively measure system reliability, or is it also possible to have all system level indicators green, yet the system may fail? Well, that is absolutely possible, totally. And again, it comes down to what we choose for our SLIs and how we implement them. Another term that has been used is uh, meaningful SLIs. And a great example here is from um, Alex Hidalgo. Um, he did a talk called Developing Meaningful SLIs, where I'm going to borrow an example from paraphrasing it. So let's consider an um, example, um, a web service for real-time stock quotes. And let's assume that that system has SLOs for response time and response format. So then we go in, we request a stock quote, and we get a response with valid JSON, and the response time is within SLO. So at this point, our SLIs for response time and data format are green. But 
what if the um, response JSON data is outdated or if it's for a completely different stock symbol than we requested. Now, at that point, it doesn't really matter if the response was timely and syntactically correct because the system failed. It did not provide the user um, expected response. And the original SLIs failed to identify the system failure. But in this example, if we now use a data correctness SLI instead of the response format SLI, then we inherently verify the availability and syntactic correctness. We have the same number of SLIs, but better coverage of the actual high level user experience. Earlier, you were also talking about, you know, uh, when we look at users, they typically experience a system from a holistic point of view. You would want system label indicators to kind of represent or measure the actual user experience. Uh, is there a way to implement a perspective that kind of approximates or duplicates this holistic view of system for service label indicators? Um, that concept that you mentioned, uh, one of a holistic view of a system has actually been around for a while. Um, in systems theory, we have the concept of a black box. It's a bit academic originally. Um, and that describes system behavior in terms of a given input resulting in a particular output without any insights of what happens inside the box, no consideration to the processing steps. And now in our field, software engineering, this concept has been embraced by quality engineering, where we commonly categorize tests as black box or white box tests. Now, if you take a step back, um, conceptually, the user journey aligns with the black box paradigm. For a given input, a particular output is expected. Now we can adopt this concept to SLIs by aggregating granular metrics into higher level SLIs that focus on the user journey or experience, using that as an indicator of system reliability. Can you give some example for a black box SLI? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so let's consider a system that creates a user account by queuing requests. So after a request for a new account from the queue has been processed, the user is notified via email standard stuff. I actually just did that this morning for a new website that I hadn't ordered from before. So in a system like that, the state of the queue can of course directly impact the user experience. For example, if the queue gets beyond a certain length, the user wait time increases. And what if the queue gets stuck, the user doesn't get their response and so forth. But so as engineers, we can be tempted to think, well, let's fix that by putting an SLI on the queue. But does that really allow us to model the user experience? Because if the queue gets stuck, we're notified after the fact. And the queue length is one, but far from the only consideration that affects processing time. So in fact, if we look at it um, from the black box, white box perspective, SLI for the queue length is actually a white box SLI. Now, a black box SLI, and that's the example you asked for, would be a request for a new account, it's the input, results in sending an email, the output, with an activation link within one minute. It's our success criteria. Now, in case of failure, if the user does not receive the activation link, this could be due to the queue getting stuck. It could also be due to a whole bunch of different reasons. Let's say backend database issues, networking problems, and more. And a queue-specific SLI would not catch those. The high level black box SLI captures all those conditions and at the same time it lets us understand the impact and system reliability through the SLO's error budget and burn rate. Stefan, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.